I mean, I think you play you played a big part in this on a personal level. Um, I can remember it early on. I mean, again, I think what we were looking for, we were trying to embrace that grey area. So we didn't want the formal treatment service, like you've got to call me Sir Root. You know, and I'm not saying it is like yeah. that, very sort of formal. Um, but we also, at that point, we didn't want the full-on, like, mutual aid fellowship sort mm. of thing. We kind of thought we needed to be, to kind of sort of sit somewhere in the middle, really, just to provide the structure, particularly at the start, because that was one of the biggest challenges that we had, was that we had no no actual recovery to start with. Everything, we had nobody to come in with five or ten years. Only yeah, myself, yeah. but, you know what I mean? I hadn't done, like, 12 steps sort of stuff. And my, my, my addiction days go back to, like, early 2000s. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it's not really relevant with, with that sort of thing. So everything we had to kind of sort of go from that initial concept. But I can remember sort of very early on sitting on the table and somebody uh, sort of turning around and saying it's the first time that I've ever felt part of a family. And me going, oh, 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 no, you can't say, oh, you can't say that. We're not a family. Oh, clear boundaries. Oh, do you know what I And then having a conversation with you, and you were like, ah, why? You know, and more importantly, who are you to say no if this guy views you as his family? Who are you to basically shit on that concept for him? Allow him to do it and to embrace it. And, and again, and it was something went away and kind of, and again, I had to kick that around for a bit because, again, like when you come out of treatment services, you, you just get all this shit like ingrained into where you like you spend half your life looking over your shoulder to make sure you've not compromised yourself. Not in your own head or your own heart, but in somebody else's eyes. You know what I mean? You're waiting for somebody mm. else to pop in it. And particularly the way that I work, because, like mm. I sort of say, I don't have, I don't have a degree or, or or this that and the other. But what I can do is I can sit in a room with an addict, and when he's telling me a lot of bullshit, I can hear it and say, "Listen, come on, mate, that's cobblers." You know? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, and again, for so something kind of having recognised that and actually sort of seeing the value in that and, and yeah. kind of recognising that for a lot of these guys that they've never felt part of anything. The only thing they've ever felt a part of is that using community, which perversely yeah. does have quite a, an intimate sort of core to it. But um, yeah, it just kind of um, something that, that we embrace fully now uh, and we actually describe ourselves as this big, weird, fucked up, dysfunctional family. 